Hi, everyone. This is Coach Sandra, and thank you again for tuning into another Journey to Authentic Living video. Today's video or today's episode is inspired by a client of mine that recently, you know, we've been doing some work together, and she is a wonderful young lady, and she has a lot of innate leadership qualities. And one of the things that she struggles with actually is that she second guesses herself. <clears throat> and um, how she knows that is usually when she doesn't follow, you know, her gut or um, her intuition, uh, she usually ends up being right. You know, she's influenced by what other people are saying or thinking. And then the next thing, you know, um, she's not um, voicing uh, that idea or that intuition um, to be able to follow through in decision making. So today I want to talk a little bit about that. And I also want to give a different angle to second guessing ourselves because a lot of times um, it stems from the fact, you know, some people say, well, it's low self-esteem, you know, something like that. And it could be definitely, there's always a flavor to that perhaps. Um, but there's a lot of fear sometimes as well. It's not so much that we are not self-confident, that we um, second guess ourselves, but that, um, you know, we just sort of have a fear of making uh, mistakes. So let me pull up my notes and um, here we go. We'll begin. So second guessing ourselves can stem from many reasons, uh, but one way is from hearing actually other people's criticisms towards us throughout our life, perhaps maybe having a very uh, critical family member or parent, uh, perhaps that every time we tried to make a decision, they would criticize us, right? And so then as we go out into the world and begin to practice being an adult, <laughs> you know, we have that tendency to, to uh, second guess ourselves. Or maybe we have adopted just by hearing other people's stories, a repetitive narrative that becomes a self-limiting affirmation for us. So uh, the good news is that we can uh, learn to stop second-guessing ourselves over time, but it's the actual practice uh, where life provides, um, provides us the material that we need to, to work on, right? It helps build that muscle. One way to follow through on any kind of uh, practical, the practical part of, of this is to not make any decisions at any time from an emotional stance, giving ourselves the ample pause. Uh, it enables us to ask ourselves some questions. For example, where am I doubting myself or with whom? In what ways do I give others the power to speak to me in ways that I find uncomfortable? You know, many times we want to be very polite to other people. We want to behave in educated ways, right? And then in a work situation, maybe somebody might call us a name or maybe even in a family situation. People have tendencies to give us nicknames, for example. Um, the ones that are a little bit hurtful or inappropriate are the ones that sometimes leave us frozen at the moment. They sort of shock us into these things. I'm just giving you an example, right? And so many times we second guess ourselves, you know, should I say something? Should I not say something? Maybe they didn't mean to say that or what have you, but it doesn't matter, right? If it's inappropriate and it hits you the wrong way, <clears throat> if it comes off the wrong way, then we need to learn to not second guess that. Right? and be able to communicate effectively to the other individual um, that this is not appropriate, right? So that would be an example. And another question is, you know, what choices am I giving myself right now? Begin practicing with small decisions. This way you gain greater skills for bigger decision-making to come. A second tip here is learning definitely from our mistakes. You know, we all say a faux pas, you know, or we second guess ourselves and then we realize that we find ourselves in a dupe loop, right? Because we are influenced by other people, for example, <clears throat> all the time. Maybe I said something wrong. Maybe I didn't say it the right way, but we always have an opportunity 
um, to at least from ourselves rectify that. Even if we second guess ourselves, we have an opportunity to correct ourselves. And if the other person doesn't provide us that opportunity, well, that's their loss, okay? All we can do is try. So it's really important not to beat ourselves up when we find ourselves sort of in this dupe loop. It took me also many years um, to practice this. I was second guessing myself all the time. And occasionally I find myself maybe second guessing myself. I think it's sort of natural. And I think that's the point of this video is that um, I believe we've all experienced um, not being sure and having doubts uh, about you know ourselves and our gut feeling and our intuition. And I think it's also a part of life that when you do recognize it, um, or that is when you have practiced in daily life, the opportunities to not second guess yourself, I think sometimes it still occurs. And I think that that's okay. You know, we're not perfect human beings. We're going to make mistakes. We're, we're going to find ourselves in moments where we're not going to listen to our intuition, right? This is kind of how we learn. This is how we become successful and, and we can measure how we are successful within not second guessing ourselves and being more assured, right? And um, so, you know, many times I, I allowed myself to be influenced, right? And, and many times I've stayed in conversations that were actually not very comfortable, not when I say not comfortable, it wasn't because the subject wasn't um, controvert or was controversial or taboo, for example. It was because I wasn't given the opportunity to speak my mind, to speak uh, what I find to be true. But remember that there is always a graceful way to exit all of these situations. Lastly, the last tip, focus on the present. Okay, because as we were saying earlier, that many times in our subconscious, if we did have a critical parent or grandparent or family member that we were influenced by, you know, we could hear that repetitive narrative going on. Or maybe we witnessed that with other people. Maybe we saw our cousins or co workers uh, with a company that we've been with for a long time, right? Sort of repeat that narrative. And believe it or not, our subconscious actually absorbs that. Even if we weren't participant of that, it does absorb that information. So we need to be really aware of the conditioning. Yeah, so that's why I gave some of those questions earlier. And of course, there's so many more questions that you can ask yourself. The important thing is curiosity. What am I feeling? Where am I? You know, who, who is influencing me? Why am I second guessing myself? You know, these kind of things and dig a little bit uh, deeper. And remember that all of these narratives once were, that is, they're in the past. So when we stay focused in the present and our mind wants to take us back into the past, well, I heard this about that person, so I'm not going to do that or say that or this or that, right? That was in the past. And what you think you overheard isn't really real today. What's real today is you in the moment beginning to practice little by little, one step at a time to not second guess yourself, okay? So I hope these tips have been helpful. Uh, I welcome more questions. If you want me to dig deeper into the subject of second guessing, please do you know, email me. I've got my email in the caption of this video and or you can ask me questions below. And again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do by clicking that red button. It really helps, um, you know, spread my message and, you know, really uh, what it is to live authentically and the way we define authenticity. It really helps quite a bit. So thank you again for all of you who have already subscribed and encouraging you to live authentically. Take care.